Hi everyone, uh, same people. Uh, most of the of you have already seen, but uh, we'll introduce to those who don't know me. Uh, I'm Alex. I'm CEO and founder of uh, DIP. It's Open Innovation Network. Our mission is to help our society to unleash the full potential of uh, full innovative potential by introducing advanced. Uh, digital infrastructure and incentive model for uh, research and innovation funding, distribution, uh, dissemination, and evaluation. So uh, I'm going to like just quickly uh, g give you uh, an agenda of what I'm going to be talking about. I have just 15 minutes, uh, but I'm very happy to talk about what we're doing uh, privately after my talk. Um, so, uh, first of all, I will cover shortly uh, the progress si since last year, because I also was uh, at that great event uh, which uh, Zvenke uh, uh, organizes every year. Uh, who Zvenke is very stick to his mission, as we do, so, and I'm very thankful for inviting me every, every year. Uh, to this event, and uh, since last year, we uh, we changed uh, a lot of things. So we had like some um, like kind of uh, reorganizing of our platform. So before that, like we were thinking that we will deliver the whole big platform for change in science, change in research, and that it's like gonna we're gonna deploy it. And it's gonna work. And this Paul also sa said that it's like for big market, it's almost impossible. You have to choose a niche. It's a first like discovery we had, and second that uh, science system is so big and s research, research innovation system is so big. There are so many stakeholders that it's hard to extra. It's hard to cover all of them, and they are all interdependent. So if there is only one stakeholder. Uh, he needs also another one to join to fully use the system. Um, so we designed a new model for science, for research and innovation, uh, and realized that go-to-market should be like more, um, more comprehensive and more gradual. So um, that's why we actually uh, uh, we reorganized our system into modular infrastructure. Uh, like it's a number of modules, which I also will show later on, um, which we extracted into specific products. So we have, um, uh, for example, already now we have five products, uh, which actually uh, basically a set of modules. We have one product for IP protection, one product for research funding, which I also will cover. And we found that it's kind of kind of efficient model to approach the market. Um, we also like we're uh, solving the same problem like Paul is solving is that research funding is either for profit or not pro non profit, and the problem with for profit that it's always a security. Unfortunately, like it's or if you want to uh, fund a science, uh, find, finding to fund the scientific research, you have to create a model for capturing a value of a research. And it's not that easy, like as also Paul mentioned. Uh, and, but like the problem is if you want to invest into research or potential outcomes or, or IP, uh, it, it, or, or anyway, it's gonna be classified as security. You can try to avoid it, like for example, like uh, market is a donation, but it's like <laughs> uh, now legally st it's still an issue uh, because, like, for like, just an example, like um, some companies were fundraising as a donation also for ICO, and uh, then if there is um, how to say, uh, if there is a profit made on these tokens, like in 100% of cases, uh, security commission can recognize it as a as a security. So that means that investment has to be like organized as investment. But there is another thing, it's uh, like actually investing into science, not for profit, not for profit, it's actually 
uh, not really the thing because like government is investing not because they just want to give money. It's actually for profit, for I will say impact, and that impact can be either economic, but it like there's a lot of other impact and the issue is that you cannot like capture it, but actually like it's proven already and uh, Europe is investing into research and innovation a lot of money like uh, because it actually provides profit, it actually provides economic impact and actually provides like um, uh, knowledge impact, knowledge creation impact and many, many other impacts. It's just hard to capture it. Um, yep, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna follow slides too much, but um, yeah, let's skip it for now. Uh, so this is basically our modular platform we uh, created uh, with the mission to connect all innovators and, uh, and help unleash innovation potential for our society. And uh, there is a number of modules within this network, uh, and uh, uh, we found that some of them are kind of easier to bring to the market, some are harder to bring to the market. And now we're experimenting and we're constantly looking for partners who need our technology. So we partner with different organizations uh, to kind of split, uh, how to say, responsibility of bringing this technology to the market and also split the profit, like share the profit uh, with these companies. Uh, and um, as I said, we introduced five products from these modules. Uh, I will briefly ex explain what they are. So first one is like the most simple one. I think like uh, many, uh, many of you already know that there is like plenty of projects who do uh, similar things. It's IP Ledger. It's um, uh, due to immutability of blockchain uh, and traceability. You can basically pr prove of ownership of an asset, IP asset, by actually putting a fingerprint on the blockchain. So it's very simple. We added some cool features there, like uh, cryptographically uh, enhanced NDA contracts, which uh, let you prove that you shared with someone specific IP asset, and there is a track record that, uh, th there is a record that he accepted it, and that it referenced a specific NDA contract. Uh, another thing is IP tokenization. It's similar to what Paul does, but it's like more general. Paul like targeting specifically bounding curves. Uh, we say that here is a tokenization model. You can apply whatever model you want. Is a bounding curves. Is like regular like uh, investment with a cap, uh, with a profit sharing or whatever. Um, this thing it's an open research platform. Our DAP open research platform which we uh, originally wanted to create only one platform. Now we switch our focus uh, to white label solutions. So we provide the technology uh, for people, for communities, research communities, for some like um, uh, lead, uh, opinion leaders who want to uh, advance open research with their specific field. So for example, if you are very passionate uh, like uh, environmental science, for example, as this gentleman <laughs> uh, said, like, uh, you can create with our technology open research platform, which also allows you to introduce new incentive models. Uh, there is like, um, also, uh, I call it incentive networks, uh, because you can basically fork incentive model of un one research platform, adjust it, and implement it for another research platform. Uh, they think it's uh, where I, why I uh, also uh, talking about uh, research funding for non-profit, because I think uh, there is not only uh, there are two two ways to advance research funding. It's like you either trying to capture a value of research in order to make it investable asset, or you help current system. Uh, to make research funding more efficient. And current system, like for, for example, funding agencies, they actually, uh, we were lucky to uh, get in touch and work to be together with one of the biggest funding bodies, funding agencies in US and Europe, uh, and design specific models for them. 
And it seems they are quite open, quite open to these new solutions. Uh, and they feel that there is a value. And they're doing like a lot of work. So it's just not seen to everyone. But trust me, <laughs> like biggest uh, science funding bodies who like uh, uh, already someone mentioned, some of them are working uh, and allocating resources to use blockchain technology to advance how they fund science right now. So it's not, it's not uh, sometimes it's not about uh, new uh, like um, investment models, mostly they tr try to still give this money uh, to uh, researchers, but uh, make, it, um, uh, make it possible to track the impact of this funding make it possible to uh, understand like how the specific like, sustainable funding program uh, impacted the field like how how to compare it with another funding program how like this million dollars impacted the field compared to another million dollars um, they also uh, working a lot on uh, in, uh, on changing a way how research proposals are evaluated so this it's also a big problem so it's uh, they spent a lot of time they spent a lot of money and like as Paul already mentioned it's uh, not the the most efficient process in the world uh, but they uh, they actually trying trying to enhance it and it because they are so big it's definitely like uh, not easy task okay um, let me get back so open innovation platform is something we found that uh, uh, similar things, similar problems, which uh, uh, pre present in science. There are similar problems in enterprises who actually want to innovate but cannot do this because uh, uh, they want because there is no n not enough like uh, incentive model either within company or to be bring innovation from outside. So we applied some of our modules to create open innovation platforms. It's quite a trend. If uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure if uh, you know it, but uh, it's quite a trend in enterprises uh, to kind of source innovation outside and make it really fair uh, deal uh, with uh, external innovators. They, they, some of them really trying to do this. And another thing which we uh, uh, another, the last product we, we have is uh, Open Journal Framework. It's um, actually a framework for creation of open, solar, uh, open access journals um, to implement new models of open access. So you, I think, all know that in open access there is a big problem that if you want to achieve a diamond access, and we all want to have like uh, scientific pub, uh, papers both published for free and be uh, accessed for free, uh, then who will pay for the process? And uh, we created a framework to, to implement these models. And uh, we actually now working on implementing one of these models and it's going to be announced soon uh, with uh, collaboration. Uh, it's, all gonna be, oh, it's also going to be announced, announced soon. Yeah, and uh, with what we also found that uh, no uh, blockchain, like it's we what we found in the beginning, no blockchain infrastructure we had at that time worked for us. So we had to develop our own blockchain to have enough flexibility uh, to be able to introduce free transactions. We believe like, it's one of the things we, f we think is very important to have free transactions because it's a very high barrier for people to participate in a blockchain platform if you need to install MetaMask and buy Ethereum and spend it on transactions. Uh, we also created our own uh, blockchain in order to make it uh, um, modular to, to replace the modules within the blockchain. Okay, so, uh, no? No time? One minute, okay. So I will. Uh, so this is basically some screenshots of uh, work we were doing uh, with the funding agencies to introduce in transparency and traceability of grant distribution. So it's uh, basically allows, uh, like, if you don't know, but funding agencies spend a lot of money to audit all funds they distributed because it goes to the 
through the chain of funding bodies. It's not necessarily that the main funding body, like NIH, gives all money. It can give to another funding body, it can give to another body, and that's it. So we, we created such solution, which can be also uh, provided for any funding agencies to introduce this real-time traceability and transparency of, on grant distribution. Uh, okay, so I think I'm gonna skip it. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much.